I'm Matt Kulik, Chief Operating Officer of Citadel Securities, and I'm extremely honored and proud to be joined by Ed Tilley, Chairman and CEO of SIBO Global Markets. Great to be here, Matt. Thank you. This trading floor is actually returning to the roots of the company. It is. Right. So this is the same building where SIBO was founded in 1973 as the first listed option exchange in the U.S. Or take us through the kind of strategic rationale from SIBO's perspective of uh, the live trading floor and how that complements the electronic part of the business and how that creates the value add for you and your stakeholders. And the goal was to allow our customers to access the liquidity that's available at SIBO any way they choose. So mm -hmm. the exchange over time has really gotten out of the decision-making process and how a customer best wants to represent their order and query for liquidity. So the nature and what you see as a result of years and years of that movement and evolution is our customers finding great utility mm -hmm. uh, in uh, using both electronics and open outcry, brokers still provide an incredible service on depth of liquidity uh, and what's beyond the screen. And that plays out each and every day. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, we obviously, Citadel Securities have a presence here on the floor. We trade across all the different mechanisms of which you offer, and SPX being one of the most important contracts in the world. Can you take me through a little bit of the culture of the firm and how you think about running the firm? Well, we're not afraid by leading and being first. We know that there'll be plenty of opportunity to adjust the decisions we've made. Some are really, really good. Some are not as good. And the philosophy is we will keep trying. And what I mean by trying is we first listen to our customers. It's very, very important. Our teams across the organization, across the globe, it's taking in that input. We process that input. We attempt to bring something to the market that answers the query or the inbound. Mm -hmm. And we're not afraid to say, oh, I don't think we got that right the first time. We go back and we redo it, we reissue, we restart. And that cycle has really worked out well, we think, uh, for our, our global customers. SIBO is generally known as an innovative company. Take us through some of the specifics of what you think really differentiates SIBO from any of its competitors in the exchange space. Well, it is the uniqueness of the products and, the, and what we've brought to market, but that is because of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I, I go back to, we view our customer base pretty holistically. And there, there is not one participant who we don't view as a customer. And what I mean by that, it's very easy to throw around the word customer and think, oh, it's the end user, whether that's institutional or retail. But for us, it's liquidity providers, it's brokers, it's funds, it's, it's you, it's all of our partners along the way and the role they play, it's all unique. So if you have that view and you can take in that input, it, it really is just then our job to be good shepherds of that information and bring solutions to the marketplace. That's what we embark on each and every day. I think the mutually reinforcing nature of, of pushing hard, pushing for innovation, not accepting a second best solution, you know, that's obviously a, a core part of SIBO's culture as a firm. But you're not just a US-based company, you have uh, global ambitions and global strategies and global businesses. So take us through some of those uh, international opportunities in Europe and or Asia, and what, what are some things you're focused on there? We'd like to be present in the jurisdictions and geographies that are open for competition. Mm -hmm. That is really the theme. So our expansion follows that model. We've had incredible success over the years in Europe, in particular European equities. We are the largest pan-European uh, equities exchange at this point. Mm -hmm. And that is just day in, day out fighting uh, to be a disruptor and offer alternatives to the legacy exchanges. And from there, uh, we've moved across geography. We're in Canada now, uh, bell to bell. We're in Tokyo and Australia, and we've expanded uh, and grown asset class. So you recently acquired Chiax Asia Pacific. So what was your rationale for that acquisition, and how do you see that business growing over time? So the acquisition included Japan and Australia, and being a very, very solid number two in Australia. Japan, uh, we've uh, grown from 2.4% share at close to about 4.4% share today. And that is before the SIBO uh, technology migration. So we know that's going to be a little bit more uh, direct and meaningful. Mm -hmm. and, and we're, we're, as I say, very patient and looking for some regulatory help there as well. How do you think about like investments you want to make in central technology capabilities versus more custom bespoke features for given product, geography, et cetera? The priority when we look at m a is to use the common technology that runs the majority of our exchanges. So that means the legacy exchanges mm -hmm. and migrate that technology uh, as we look into and grow into different geographies and different asset classes. The core from your perspective, your, your customer's perspective, your firm's perspective is this is the same core technology that I know, that I'm used to in the right. States. Absolutely. I know what to expect when mm -hmm. things go 
crazy in the market, liquidity is, is under pressure, uh, regulation changes, you know there's gonna be a constant, and that is the way that SIBO views the technology stack and the enhancements and the rollouts. And that's an extremely important point. And it's extremely important to us as a market making firm, also with a global presence across these various products and geographies as well, um, being able to scale capability more rapidly than scaling complexity. Right. So for us, if we're thinking about entering a new market, understanding already how the technology platform works, how some of those edge cases work, that we feel comfortable with some of the operational risk components and things like that that we think increase market robustness makes us much more comfortable entering a market more quickly and being a liquidity provider. And that becomes a win-win you know, for, for, for our firms working together. Right? And I think that partnership mentality is an important part of success in these markets. So you know, speaking about partnerships, um, what are some other key partnerships that SIBO is looking at in the markets today? We like to build on uh, what we know. And mm -hmm. so with index providers, we have um, incredibly important partnerships. We're standing in the SBX pit, which is right. really relies on uh, one of our key index provider partnerships. And then from a liquidity provider perspective, as I said, one of the key components is how we view the ecosystem. And so satisfying uh, Citadel Securities, for example, is, is a is a pretty high benchmark when we can do that. <laughs> That's good to hear. I'm glad that we're holding you guys accountable. You are. We hold ourselves to a very high benchmark as well. Happy, yeah. happy to be held there. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ed. It was a real pleasure to, to speak. We've, uh, we always have good conversations whenever we chat, and this time we you know, went to the trouble of having it be filmed. Excellent. Well, this has been great. Thank you, guys. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you.